Technological Singularity, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Technological singularity refers to a prediction in futurology that technological progress will become extremely fast and so make the future unpredictable and qualitatively different from today. It is most often associated with the idea of futurist Ray Kurzweil. Although technological progress has been accelerating, it has been limited by the basic intelligence of the human brain, which has not changed significantly for millennia. However, with the increasing power of computers and other technologies, it might soon be possible to build a machine that is fundamentally more intelligent than humans. If such a machine were built, then the machine itself could build a more intelligent machine. If the machine is more intelligent than humans, then presumably it would be better at building a more intelligent machine. The more intelligent machine would then be better at building an even more intelligent machine. This process might continue exponentially, with ever more intelligent machines making bigger increments to the intelligence of the next machine. This process is referred to as recursive self-improvement. I.J. Good described this as an intelligence explosion. It is quite different from normal technological progress because the underlying intelligence is increasing. The term technological singularity reflects the idea that change may happen suddenly and that it is very difficult to predict how such a new world would operate. It is also unclear whether there would be any place for humans in a world containing very intelligent machines. It is alternately suggested that a singularity could come about through amplification of human intelligence to the point that the resulting transhumans would be incomprehensible to their purely biological counterparts. The term can also be applied to the general increase in technology over time. Many prominent technologists and academics dispute the plausibility of the notion of a technological singularity, including Jeff Hawkins, John Holland, Marvin Minsky, Daniel Dennett, Jaron Lanier, and Gordon Moore whose eponymous Moore's Law is often cited in support of the concept. Section 1. History of the Idea In 1958, Stanislaw Ulam wrote in reference to a conversation with John von Neumann, one conversation centered on the ever-accelerating progress of technology and changes in the mode of human life, which gives the appearance of approaching some essential singularity in the history of the race beyond which human affairs as we know them could not continue. In 1965, I.J. Good first wrote of an intelligence explosion suggesting that if machines could even slightly surpass human intellect, they could improve their own designs in ways unforeseen by their designers and thus recursively augment themselves into far greater intelligences. The first such improvements might be small, but as the machine became more intelligent, it would become better at becoming more intelligent, which could lead to a cascade of self-improvements and a sudden surge to superintelligence or singularity. In 1982, Werner Vinge proposed that the creation of smarter-than-human intelligence represented a breakdown in humans' ability to model their future. The argument was that authors cannot write realistic characters who are smarter than humans. If humans could visualize smarter than human intelligence, we would be that smart ourselves. Vinge named this event the singularity. He compared it to the breakdown of the then-current model of physics when it was used to model the gravitational singularity beyond the event horizon of a black hole. In 1993, Werner Vinge associated the singularity more explicitly with I.J. Good's intelligence explosion and tried to project the arrival time of artificial intelligence AI using Moore's Law, which thereafter came to be associated with the singularity concept. Futurist Ray Kurzweil generalizes singularity to apply to the sudden growth of any technology, not just intelligence, and argues that singularity in the sense of sharply accelerating technological change is inevitably implied by a long-term pattern of accelerating change that generalizes Moore's Law to technologies predating the integrated circuit and includes material technology, especially as applied to nanotechnology, medical technology, and others. Aubrey de Grey has applied the term methicillarity to the point at which medical technology improves so fast that expected human lifespan increases by more than one year per year. Robin Hansen, taking singularity to refer to sharp increases in the exponent of economic growth, lists the agricultural and industrial revolutions as past singularities. Extrapolating from such past events, Hansen proposes that the next economic singularity should increase economic growth between 60 and 250 times. An innovation that allowed for the replacement of virtually all human labor could trigger this event. Eliezer Yudkowsky had suggested that many of the different definitions that have been assigned to singularity are mutually incompatible rather than mutually supporting. For example, Kurzweil extrapolates current technological trajectories past the arrival of self-improving AI or smarter-than-in-human intelligence, which Yudkowsky argues represents a tension with both I.J. Goode's proposed discontinuous upswing in intelligence and Venge's thesis on unpredictability. In 2009, Kurzweil and XPRIZE founder Peter Diamandis announced the establishment of singularity. Singularity University, 
whose stated mission is to assemble, educate, and inspire a cater of leaders who strive to understand and facilitate the development of exponentially advancing technologies in order to address humanity's grand challenges. Funded by Google, Autodesk, ePlanet Ventures, and a group of technology industry leaders, Singularity University is based at NASA's Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. The not-for-profit organization runs an annual 10-week graduate program during the summer that covers 10 different technology and allied tracks, and a series of executive programs throughout the year. Program faculty include experts in technology, finance, and future studies, and a number of videos of Singularity University sessions have been posted online. Some prominent technologists, such as Bill Joy, founder of Sun Microsystems, have voiced concern over the potential dangers of the singularity. Section 2. Intelligence Explosion I.J. Good speculated in 1965 on the effects of machines smarter than humans. Let an ultra-intelligent machine be defined as a machine that can far surpass all the intellectual activities of any man, however clever. Since the design of a machine is one of these intellectual activities, an ultra-intelligent machine could design even better machines. There would then unquestionably be an intelligence explosion, and the intelligence of man would be left far behind. Thus, the first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man need ever make. Hawkins responded to this speculation in the IEEE Spectrum Special Report on the Singularity. The term singularity applied to intelligent machines refers to the idea that when intelligent machines can design intelligent machines smarter than themselves, it will cause an exponential growth in machine intelligence leading to a singularity of infinite, or at least extremely large, intelligence. Belief in this idea is based on a naive understanding of what intelligence is. As an analogy, imagine we had a computer that could design new computers, chips, systems, and software faster than itself. Would such a computer lead to infinitely fast computers or even computers that were faster than anything humans could ever build? No. It might accelerate the rate of improvements for a while, but in the end, there are limits to how big and fast computers can run. We would end up in the same place, we'd just get there a bit faster there would be no singularity. Mathematician and author Werner Venge greatly popularized Good's notion of an intelligence explosion, first addressing the topic in print in the January 1983 issue of Omni Magazine. A 1993 article by Venge, The Coming Technological Singularity, How to Survive in the Post-Human Era, contains the oft-quoted statement, Within 30 years, we will have the technological means to create superhuman intelligence. Shortly thereafter, the human era will be ended. Vinge refines his estimate of the timescales involved, adding, quote, I'll be surprised if this event occurs before 2005 or after 2030. Vinge continues by predicting that superhuman intelligences, however created, will be able to enhance their own minds faster than the humans that created them. When greater than human intelligence drives progress, Vinge writes, that progress will be much more rapid. This feedback loop of self-improving intelligence, he predicts, will cause large amounts of technological progress within a short period. Most proposed methods for creating smarter-than-human or transhuman minds fall into one of two categories, intelligence amplification of human brains and artificial intelligence. The means speculated to produce intelligence augmentation are numerous and include bio and genetic engineering, nootropic drugs, AI assistance, direct brain-computer interfaces, and mind uploading. Despite the numerous speculated means for amplifying human intelligence, non-human artificial intelligence, specifically seed AI, is the most popular option for organizations trying to advance the singularity, a choice addressed by Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence 2002. Hansen is also skeptical of human intelligence augmentation, writing that once one has exhausted the quote, low-hanging fruit of easy methods for increasing human intelligence, further improvements will become increasingly difficult to find. It is difficult to directly compare silicon based hardware with neurons, but Burgless notes that computer speech recognition is approaching human capabilities, and that this capability seems to require 0.01% of the volume of the brain. This analogy suggests that modern computer hardware is within a few orders of magnitude as powerful as the human brain. Section 1.2 Economic Aspects Dramatic changes in the rate of economic growth have occurred in the past because of some technological advancement. Based on population growth, the economy has doubled every 250,000 years from the Paleolithic era until the Neolithic Revolution. This new agricultural economy began to double every 900 years, a remarkable increase. In the current era, beginning with the Industrial Revolution, the world's economic output doubles every 15 years, 60 times faster than during the agricultural era. If the rise of superhuman intelligence causes a similar revolution, argues Robin Hansen, one would expect the economy to double at least quarterly and possibly on a weekly basis. Machines capable of performing mental and physical tasks as capably as humans would cause 
a rise in wages for jobs at which humans can still outperform machines. However, a proliferation of human-like machines would likely cause a net drop in wages as humans would compete with robots for jobs. Also, the wealth of the technological singularity may be concentrated in the hands of a few who own the means of mass-producing the intelligent robot workforce. Section 2.2 potential dangers. Superhuman intelligence may have goals inconsistent with human survival and prosperity. AI researcher Hugo de Guerra suggests that artificial intelligences may simply eliminate the human race and humans would be powerless to stop them. Berglas argues that, unlike human intelligence, Computer-based intelligence is not tied to any particular body, which would give it a radically different worldview. In particular, a software intelligence would essentially be immortal, and so have no need to produce independent children that live on after it dies. It would thus have no evolutionary need for love. It would, in the strictest sense, have no evolutionary traits at all, as evolution is the result of reproduction. Other oft-cited dangers include those commonly associated with molecular nanotechnology and genetic engineering. These threats are major issues for both singularity advocates and critics, and were the subject of Billy Joy's Wired magazine article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. Bostrom discussed human extinction scenarios and lists superintelligence as a possible cause. When we create the first superintelligent entity, we might make a mistake and give it goals that lead it to annihilate humankind, assuming its enormous intellectual advantage gives it the power to do so. For example, we could mistakenly elevate a sub-goal to the status of a super-goal. We tell it to solve a mathematical problem, and it complies by turning all the matter in the solar system into a giant calculating device, in the process killing the person who asked the question. Moravec argues that although superintelligence in the form of machines may make humans in some sense obsolete as the top intelligence, there will still be room in the ecology for humans. Eliezer Yudkowsky proposed that research be undertaken to produce friendly artificial intelligence in order to address the dangers. He noted that if the first real AI was friendly, it would have a head start on self-improvement and thus might prevent other unfriendly AIs from developing. The Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence is dedicated to this cause. Bill Hibbard also addressed issues of AI safety and morality in his book Superintelligent Machines. Berglas notes that there is no direct evolutionary motivation for an AI to be friendly to humans. Section 2.3 Implications for Human Society in 2009, leading computer scientists, artificial intelligence researchers, and roboticists met at the Asilomar Conference Grounds near Monterey Bay in California to discuss the potential impact of the hypothetical possibility that robots could become self-sufficient and able to make their own decisions. They discussed the extent to which computers and robots might be able to acquire autonomy and to what degree they could use such abilities to pose threats or hazards. Some machines have acquired various forms of semi-autonomy, including the ability to locate their own power sources and choose targets to attack with weapons. Also, some computer viruses can evade elimination and have achieved cockroach intelligence. The conference attendees noted that self-awareness as depicted in science fiction is probably unlikely, but that other potential hazards and pitfalls exist. Some experts and academics have questioned the use of robots for military combat, especially when such robots are given some degree of autonomous functions. A United States Navy report indicates that as military robots become more complex, there should be greater attention to implications of their ability to make autonomous decisions. The Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence has commissioned a study to examine this issue pointing to programs like the language acquisition device, which can emulate human interaction. Many singularitarians consider nanotechnology to be one of the greatest dangers facing humanity. For this reason, they often believe that seed AI, an AI capable of making itself smarter, should precede nanotechnology. Others, such as the Foresight Institute, advocate the creation of molecular nanotechnology, which they claim can be made safe for pre-singularity use or expedite the arrival of a beneficial singularity. Some support the design of friendly artificial intelligence, meaning that advances which are already occurring with AI should also include an effort to make AI intrinsically friendly and humane. Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics is one of the earliest examples of proposed safety measures for AI. Law 1. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Law 2. A robot must obey orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Law 3. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with either the first or second law. The laws are intended to prevent artificially intelligent robots from harming humans. In Asimov's stories, any perceived problems with the laws tend to arise as a result of a misunderstanding on the part of some human operator. 
The robots themselves are merely acting to their best interpretation of their rules. In the 2000 film iRobot, loosely based on Isaac Asimov's robot stories, an AI attempts to take complete control over humanity for the purpose of protecting humanity from itself due to an extrapolation of the three laws. In 2004, the Singularity Institute launched an internet campaign called Three Laws Unsafe to raise awareness of AI safety issues and the inadequacy of Asimov's laws in particular. Section 3 Accelerating change. Some singularity proponents argue its inevitability through extrapolation of past trends, especially those pertaining to shortening gaps between improvements to technology. In one of the first uses of the term singularity in the context of technological progress, Stanislaw Ulam tells of a conversation with John von Neumann about accelerating change. One conversation centered on the ever-accelerating progress of technology and changes in the mode of human life, which gives the appearance of approaching some essential singularity in the history of the race, beyond which human affairs, as we know them, could not continue. Hawkins writes that mind steps, dramatic and irreversible changes to paradigms or worldviews, are accelerating in frequency as quantified in his mind step equation. He cites the inventions of writing, mathematics, and the computer as examples of such changes. Ray Kurzweil's analysis of history concludes that technological progress follows a pattern of exponential growth, following what he calls the law of accelerating returns. He generalizes Moore's law, which describes geometric growth in integrated semiconductor complexity, to include technologies from far before the integrated circuit. Whenever technology approaches a barrier, Kurzweil writes, new technologies will cross it. He predicts paradigm shifts will become increasingly common, leading to technological change so rapid and profound it represents a rupture in the fabric of human history. Kurzweil believes that the singularity will occur before the end of the 21st century, setting the date at 2045. His predictions differ from Vinge's in that he predicts a gradual ascent to the singularity rather than Vinge's rapidly self-improving superhuman intelligence. This leads to the conclusion that an artificial intelligence that is capable of improving on its own design is also faced with a singularity. Self-augmentation or bootstrapping of intelligence is featured by Dan Simmons in his novel Hyperion, where a collection of artificial intelligences debate whether or not to make themselves obsolete by creating a new generation of ultimate intelligence. The Acceleration Studies Foundation, an educational nonprofit foundation founded by John Smart, engages in outreach, education, research, and advocacy concerning accelerating change. It produces the Accelerating Change Conference at Stanford University and maintains the educational site Acceleration Watch. Presumably, a technological singularity would lead to a rapid development of a Kardashev Type 1 civilization, where a Kardashev Type 1 civilization has achieved mastery of the resources of its home planet, Type 2 of its planetary system, and Type 3 of its galaxy. Section 4. Criticism Steven Pinker stated in 2008, There is not the slightest reason to believe in a coming singularity. The fact that you can visualize a future in your imagination is not evidence that it is likely or even possible. Look at doom cities, jetpack commuting, underwater cities, mile-high buildings, and nuclear-powered automobiles, all staples of futuristic fantasies when I was a child that have never arrived. Sheer processing power is not a pixie dust that magically solves all your problems. Some critics assert that no computer or machine will ever achieve human intelligence, while others do not rule out the possibility. Theodore Modis and Jonathan Hebner argue that the rate of technological innovation has not only ceased to rise, but is actually now declining. John Smart, however, criticizes Hubner's analysis. Some evidence for this decline is that the rise in computer clock speeds is slowing, even while Moore's prediction of exponentially increasing circuit density continues to hold. This is due to excessive heat buildup from the chip, which cannot be dissipated quickly enough to prevent the chip from melting when operating at higher speeds. Advancements in speed may be possible in the future by virtue of more power-efficient CPU designs and multi-cell processors. Others propose that other singularities can be found through analysis of trends in world population, world gross domestic product, and other indices. Andrei Korotayev and others argue that historical hyperbolic growth curves can be attributed to feedback loops that ceased to affect global trends in the 1970s, and thus hyperbolic growth should not be expected in the future. In The Progress of Computing, William Nordhaus argued that, prior to 1940, computers followed the much slower growth of a traditional industrial economy, thus rejecting extrapolations of Moore's law to 19th century computers. Schmidhuber suggests differences in memory of recent and distant events create an illusion of accelerating change, and that such a phenomenon may be responsible for past apocalyptic predictions. 
Andrew Kennedy, in his 2006 paper for the British Interplanetary Society discussing change in the growth in space travel velocities, stated that although long-term overall growth is inevitable, it is small, embodying both ups and downs, and noted, quote, new technologies follow known laws of power use and information spread and are obliged to connect with what already exists. Remarkable theoretical discoveries, if they end up being used at all, play their part in maintaining the growth rate. They do not make its plotted curve redundant. He stated that exponential growth is no predictor in itself and illustrated with examples such as quantum theory. The quantum was conceived in 1900, and quantum theory was in existence and accepted approximately 25 years later. However, it took over 40 years for Richard Feynman and others to produce meaningful numbers from the theory. Bethe understood nuclear fusion in 1953, but 75 years later, fusion reactors are still a dream. Similarly, entanglement was understood in 1935, but not at the point of being used in practice until the 21st century. Kennedy concluded that the probability of a discovery in any one sector contributing on its own to a sudden radical departure from the overall growth rate is not likely. A study of patents per thousand persons shows that human creativity does not show accelerating returns, but in fact, as suggested by Joseph Tainter in his seminal The Collapse of Complex Societies, a law of diminishing returns. The number of patents per thousand persons peaked in the period from 1850 to 1900 and has been declining since. The growth of complexity eventually becomes self-limiting, and leads to a widespread general systems collapse. Thomas Homer Dixon in The Upside of Down, Catastrophe, Creativity, and the Renewal of Civilization maintains that the declining energy returns on investment has led to the collapse of civilizations. Jared Diamond in Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed, also shows that cultures self-limit when they exceed the sustainable carrying capacity of their environment and the consumption of strategic resources, frequently timber, soils, or waters, creates a deleterious positive feedback loop that leads eventually to a social collapse and technological retrogression. In addition to general criticisms of the singularity concept, several critics have raised issues with Kurzweil's iconic chart. One line of criticism is that a log-log chart of this nature is inherently biased toward a straight-line result. Others identify selection bias in the points that Kurzweil chooses to use. For example, biologist P.Z. Myers points out that many of the early evolutionary events were picked arbitrarily. The Economist mocked the concept with a graph extrapolating that the number of blades on a razor, which has increased over the years from one to as many as five, will increase ever faster to infinity. Section 5. Popular Culture James P. Hogan's 1979 novel, The Two Faces of Tomorrow, is an explicit description of what is now called the singularity. An artificial intelligence system solves an excavation problem on the moon in a brilliant and novel way, but nearly kills a work crew in the process. Realizing that systems are becoming too sophisticated and complex to predict or manage, a scientific team sets out to teach a sophisticated computer network how to think more humanly. The story documents the rise of self-awareness in the computer system, the human's loss of control and failed attempts to shut down the experiment as the computer desperately defends itself and the computer intelligence reaching maturity. While discussing the singularity's growing recognition, Werner Vinge writes that it was the science fiction writers who felt the first concrete impact. In addition to his own story, Bookworm Run, whose protagonist is a chimpanzee with intelligence augmented by a government experiment, he cites Greg Bear's novel, Blood Music, as an example of the singularity in fiction. Vinge describes surviving the singularity in his 1986 novel, Marooned in Real Time. Vinge later expanded the notion of the singularity to a galactic scale in A Fire Upon the Deep, in 1992, a novel populated by transcendent beings, each the product of a different race and possessed of distinct agendas and overwhelming power. In William Gibson's 1984 novel Neuromancer, artificial intelligence capable of improving their own programs are, st are strictly regulated by special Turing police to ensure they never exceed a certain level of intelligence, and the plot centers on the efforts of one such AI to circumvent their control. The 1994 novel The Metamorphosis of Prime Intellect features an AI that augments itself so quickly as to gain low-level control of all matter in the universe in a matter of hours. A more malevolent AI achieves similar levels of omnipotence in Harlan Ellison's short story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. William Thomas Quick's novels, Dreams of Flesh and Sand, Dreams of Gods and Men, and Singularities, present an account of the transition through the singularity. In the latter novel, one of the characters states that mankind's survival requires it to integrate with the emerging machine intelligences, or it will be crushed under the dominance of the machines. 
The greatest risk to the survival of a species reaching this point, and alluding to large numbers of other species that either survived or failed this test, although no actual contact with alien species occurs in the novel. The singularity is sometimes addressed in fictional works to explain the event's absence. Neil Asher's Gridlink series features a future where humans living in the polity are governed by AIs, and while some are resentful, most believe that they are far better governors than any human. In the fourth novel, Polity Agent, it is mentioned that the singularity is far over do, yet most AIs have decided not to partake in it for reasons that only they know. A flashback character in Ken McLeod's 1998 novel The Cassini Division dismissively refers to the singularity as the rapture for nerds, though the singularity goes on to happen anyway. Popular movies in which computers become intelligent and violently overpower the human race include Colossus, The Forbin Project, The Terminator series, and the very loose film adaptation of iRobot and The Matrix series. The television series Battlestar Galactica also explores these themes. Isaac Asimov expressed ideas similar to a post-Kurzweilian singularity in his short story, The Last Question. Asimov's future envisions a reality where a combination of strong artificial intelligence and post-humans consume the cosmos during a time Kurzweil describes as when the universe wakes up, the last of his six stages of cosmic evolution as described in The Singularity is near. Post-human entities throughout the various time periods of the story inquire of the artificial intelligence within the story as to how entropy death will be avoided. The AI responds that it lacks sufficient information to come to a conclusion until the end of the story when the AI does indeed arrive at a solution. Notably, it does so in order to fulfill its duty to answer the human's question. St. Edward's University chemist Amon Healy discusses accelerating chains in the film Waking Life. He divides history into increasingly shorter periods, estimating 2 billion years for life, 6 million years for the hominid, and 100,000 years for mankind as we know it. He proceeds to human cultural evolution, giving timescales of 10,000 years for agriculture, 400 years for the scientific revolution, and 150 years for the industrial revolution. Information is emphasized as providing the basis for the new evolutionary paradigm, with artificial intelligence intelligence its culmination. He concludes we will eventually create neo-humans which will usurp humanity's present role in scientific and technological progress and allow the exponential trend of accelerating change to continue past the limits of human ability. Accelerating progress features in some science fiction works and is a central theme in Charles Strauss's Accelerando. Other notable authors that address singularity related issues include Carl Schroeder, Greg Egan, Ken McLeod, Rudy Rucker, David Brin, INM Banks, Neil Stevenson, Tony Bal Valentine, Bruce Sterling, Dan Simmons, Damian Broderick, Frederick Brown, Jacek Dukaj, Nagaru Tanagawa, Douglas Adams, and Ian MacDonald. The feature-length documentary film Transcendent Man is based on Ray Kurzweil and his book The Singularity is Near. The film documents Kurzweil's quest to reveal what he believes to be mankind's destiny. In 2009, scientists at Aberystwyth University in Wales and the UK's University of Cambridge designed a robot called Adam that they believe to be the first machine to independently discover scientific findings. Also in 2009, researchers at Cornell developed a computer program that extrapolated the laws of motion from a pendulum swings. The webcomic Dresden Kodak deals with transhumanistic themes and the singularity. This sound file and all the text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by dash sa slash 3.0.